What's up everybody? Merry Christmas! I hope everyone out there is having a wonderful holiday with their families this year. And I certainly hope that everyone's ready for the new year as much as I am because buddy, let me tell you what, spec season is here. So I've been getting a lot of questions on my videos regarding the gear that I'm using to catch specs. So I figured I would make this brief video to kind of break down the rods, the line, and pretty much all the tackle that I'm using to go spec fishing. So let's dive in. So the first one I'm gonna show you guys is my number one go-to jigging rod. This is the main one that I use for most occasions, and this is the 10-foot ACC mid-seater jigging rod. Now, uh, model number of this is GS10M, and uh, like I said, 10-foot rod, it is a two-piece rod, so right here you can see where it uh, joins up. So you can pop this off if you're traveling or need to, uh, don't have a lot of room on the boat, you can actually pop this off and it becomes a two-piece. And then when you're ready to rig it up, pop it back on, put the line through, you're done deal. So that's pretty cool. So what I have paired with this 10-foot rod is the B&M BAN01 reel. Now this thing here, you probably look at it and you're like, that's ah, not much of a reel. And you're right, it's not. The sole purpose of this thing is to hold line. That's it. I'm not casting it. I'm not dishing out a huge lot of line. I mean, unless it gets hung up or something, but main purpose is just to hold and manage line. I used to have a different one on here, a different B&M reel, but I switched up to this not too long ago, actually. I'd been eyeballing this specific model for some time. And so I switched up uh, this last time I was down in Okeechobee fishing with my father. And uh, you could actually see the first time that I used this is in my Harney Pond video, which if you guys haven't watched, uh, just jump on the channel, you'll see it on there. And this thing is great. It's super lightweight, which is my personal number one consideration for a jig and reel. I don't care how fancy it is, how much money you spend on it. All I care about is weight. And again, I'm not casting, I'm not doing anything crazy with it. I just needed to hold line. And honestly, that's something you should consider as well if you're in the market for a jig and rod. So on this reel, again, this is the BAN01 by BNM. You may be looking at it, you're like, well, how do you, you know, how do you reel it? How do you release drag? So the one side is the reel, you know, pretty basic. But the other side, you have this knob, uh, which has the model number and everything on it. On this knob, you can loosen it, and this is gonna give you drag. Um, so this is what I use to kind of adjust the depth and everything. So when you're done, you just screw it back. And then your line is taut. And that's all there is to it. That's it. So again, real lightweight reel. Uh, so no complaints there. And so this reel actually comes in two different sizes and I have the slightly larger one, which I think is the BAN02. Um, I have that on my 11 foot rod, which I'll show you here in a second. And that's not by purpose. I actually bought that by mistake. I meant to get two of the O1s, uh, but that's okay. It's still super lightweight and it, it works fine. So uh, that's pretty much it for this. Um, you know, this is the uh, the core candle, regular core candle from uh, ACC. You can also get both of these ACC rods I'm fixing to show you, you can get in like a fancier grip, which I have on my 11 foot, I'll show you here in a second. But this is just the basic core candle. And I mean, it works great. So that is all that I have set up on this. Um, I'm using some Trilene six pound test uh, clear line. Uh, I'll be honest, uh, this was a new, uh, this is like the Smooth Casting XL model line. This was something new I tried, and I gotta be honest, it's not the greatest. And what I mean by that is I notice after jigging for quite a bit, the line kinda gets kinda bunchy near the near where the jig is tied on. And I'm not sure if that's just from maybe getting hung up or catching a lot of fish. I'll be honest, I'm not quite sure why it does it, but I'm not a fan of it. So what I'll probably end up doing is switching the line to something else, but six pound test is generally what I like to stick with. It's not too light and it's not too heavy. It's definitely enough to haul in a, a big bass if you happen to hook onto a big bass. And certainly enough for for, uh, for pulling in specs. So um, yeah, like I said, just trialing, trialing six pound test line. 
And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to that one. So next up is the, uh, the bigger brother of the 10 foot ACC. This is the 11 foot ACC. Now this is a rear seater model. Um, so as you can see, it's sitting to the back of the rod. And you know what? I, I gotta say, I don't really have a preference as to which one is better, the rear seater or the mid seater. That's really kind of just personal preference, I think. Because I, I do find this one comfortable. Uh, my only complaint is the fact that since it's an 11 footer, it's slightly heavier. So you will kind of get jig and fatigue um, a little bit quicker than that standard 10 foot. But um, this is the 11 foot I find is really nice when you're at the front of the boat and you're reaching for those untouched spots, just cause you get a little bit more length ahead of the boat, you might be able to reach those fish that haven't been spooked yet. So that's kind of where I find the 11 foot to be a little more handy. On one of my previous videos, I was talking about getting a 12 foot rod. And once we got to the store and I was kind of feeling it in person, yeah, 12 foot I think is a little bit too much weight wise especially maybe for some people they can manage that but yeah the 12 foot just felt a little too heavy and i think 12 foot and above is probably only really beneficial for spider rigging so if you're doing manual jigging like what i'm doing in these videos i wouldn't go any larger than uh, an 11 foot but again that's just my personal preference so take it with a grain of salt so anyway on this 11 footer i have the bnm ban02 so this is slightly larger than the L1. A model number on this 11 foot ACC is the GS11RSG. This is also a two piece rod. So again, you can pop that off and pop it back on as you see fit if you're traveling. And uh, one really nice thing about ACC rods is, you know, they're all, they're all two piece rods. And if you break the tip, you can just buy a replacement tip. So you're not having to buy another 90 or $100 rod you know, you'll spend half that, if not less, uh, just for the tip. So that's pretty cool. And also on the 11 foot, so this is the fancier handle. You can get a look at this. So I believe it actually is cork underneath this like rubber grip. And I'll be honest, I was a little hesitant at first uh, when I bought my 10 foot, I saw this and I was like, ah, you know, I don't know how well that's going to hold up over time between getting like fish slime on your hands and, and handling this thing. And so I, I didn't go with this fancier handle when I, when I bought my 10 footer, this one, they actually only had the fancy handle in the, in the rear seat, 11 foot. And honestly, it's fine. I wouldn't say it's any more comfortable than the, uh, the regular cork, but I mean, it sure looks cool. right? So anyway, yeah, that's the only difference as far as that cork goes. And again, I, th I think there is cork underneath this. It just has this like rubber wrapping around it. So how well this is going to hold up over time, I can't say for sure because I've only had this for two or three weeks because um, I bought this when I was in Okeechobee last time. So yeah, that's pretty much all there is to this. Not far off from the, the regular 10 foot that I showed you the first time. So solid rod, slightly heavier. So that's something to consider. If you're just getting into jigging, what I would say is to start out with a 10 foot rod. It doesn't matter if it's an ACC, a BNM, Ozark, you know, whatever you find comfortable, but start out with a 10 foot because that's a really good introductory length to kind of get accustomed to doing nonstop jigging. Because, I mean, unless you have wrists of thunder, you're going to get jigging fatigue. I get it really bad. And that's because I have really bad carpal tunnel from uh, my job and playing music my whole life and stuff but <clears throat> yeah it's it's just a really good a really good length to get started with so um just kind of keep that in mind if you're shopping for a jigging rod so this third one i'm going to show you this is something a little bit special that you won't find in the store now this is a custom build this was actually I'm gonna say designed uh, by my uncle's brother, Terry. Now these are, this is a Bremsticks BS-10. This is a 10 foot cane pole. So this actually collapses, I believe somewhere here. Yep, this is a collapsible uh, cane pole. And basically what we've done, uh, so there's a hole right here that we made and uh, it's just surrounded by a little bit of, uh, 
I don't know if that's caulking or just some, some glue to kind of smooth out the line going in. So on this, <clears throat> what we've done is we have that hole there, the line's going through the entire rod, so there's no eyes on this thing. It's just a straight cane pole. And then at the end, let's pull out here, we have the line coming out. So it's a little tricky uh, setting these up because you have to kind of feed the line through. We have to use a vacuum to pull the line through. But one thing I will say, these, these things are heavier than them ACC rods, but the sensitivity on these things is unmatched, honestly, in my opinion. Um, and they're really fun to pull specs out with. So um, I have two of these. I, I generally keep one on the boat as just a spare if you know someone hops on the boat and they want to jig. Um, or if, God forbid one of the ACCs break or get messed up. And then on the back here, we have, uh, now this is the other B&M reel that I used to use on the ACC. Uh, this is a Bucks Mini BMR1, I think. And I'll be honest, these reels are trash. I have a few of them. I was buying these pretty steadily uh, when I was really getting into the sport of, of vertical jigging. Yeah, again, pretty much trash reels. You can see the screws on here are all rusted. I mean, you can't expect much with these reels because they're, I mean, they're like 15, 20 bucks. Yeah, and then the, the latch right here, this is how you release drag. But yeah, on, on my other rod, that latch broke off. And you can see on the bar, it gets everything gets rusty on these things. And I take good care of my equipment but you, you just can't, you can't keep it from rusting. So for basic use, these reels are okay. Like if your options are limited where you are, these will do the job. I mean, obviously they, they've been on these for since we built them, but if I had to advise you on the best reel to go with for a jigging rod, I would suggest those BAN01 all plastic smaller reels. So other than a couple screws in that thing, you know, you're not gonna get any rust. So. At any rate, this thing works okay, but what we did is we used some shrink wrap around this because there's no way to seat the reel onto the pole like the ACCs. So we just kind of uh, used some heat and shrink wrapped this thing onto the cane pole itself. So that's how it's held onto the rod. And uh, we have, I don't remember what pound test braid backing is on here, but that's the initial line that's on here is braid. And then we have uh, just a, a mono leader at the end tied onto it. So again, really cool setup. And again, you won't find this anywhere, but you can make this yourself. So as far as jigging rods, those are the three that I, I use on a regular basis right now. Now, if I'm minnow fishing or if I'm casting with say like road runners, um, anything like that to get them deeper fish, I have this setup here. Now this is my casting setup. And this is a Sam super sensitive six foot uh, graphite jig pole. I don't recall where I got this. It, it might've been fast break in Okeechobee. Cork handle here. It's a really unique rod. And I got this during bluegill season last year. And this thing is so freaking fun to catch bluegill and shellcracker with and specs. But, oh my goodness. I mean, this thing is so thin and I've, I've hauled in some nice bass with this too. Um, this is also a two piece rod. It's got a, a joint right here. And I also have six pound test mono, just clear mono on this, the same trialene, um, not so great uh, trialene line on here. It does the job, but like I said, it's, I don't know if it's the memory of the line that's kind of crappy. So until I find a better mono, this is, this is what I'm using. And real wise, this is the Sahara 500. I cannot find these freaking reels anymore because I was gonna get another one, but I think they quit making it. Um, which is too bad because this is such a great, great reel. It's lightweight. It's it's very minimal as far as size, so it doesn't really get in the way. And uh, it's just a smooth reel in general. So uh, Sahara 500, that's what I put on this. And like I said, six pound test, mono. Really nothing else to it. But uh, really, really nice rod to cast with. You know, if we do minnow fishing, anything like that, I'll put on a little bobber and cast this thing out, great rod. So if you're looking for something uh, lightweight and ultralight setup uh, that you can cast with, I would very much recommend uh, Sam Super Sensitive Graphite Jig Pole. 
And again, this is a six footer. So that's that. Whew, it is cold out. We're getting a pretty, pretty bad cold front rolling through central Florida right now. I have made, well, I started to make a couple of fishing videos uh, the past few days, three or four days. I've attempted to go out the first day. You will see right here. Yeah, that's what everyone wants to taste in their fish. crap just pisses me off you know why can't we just use harvesters they're way more effective and I have a buddy of mine that used to do that for a job and my goodness the horror stories he used to tell me like if they didn't dump the amount of stuff they or if they didn't spray the amount that they were supposed to in any given area they would make them go out there and just dump it in the freaking water it, it's all about money. It's disgusting. We do use harvesters in some of these lakes, but you know, spraying chemicals, it's cheaper for the city. And uh, I don't know. I really hope at some point in my lifetime they get all this crap squared away because who the hell wants to, to fish in that? It's just, it's sad. And you know, they'll tell you, oh, it's fine. You can, you can eat the fish and this and that. And you know, we do, but not over freshly sprayed areas. And you can usually tell when an area is sprayed cause it's gonna be all brown within a week's time. And it's frustrating. Uh, and that was on the river, so that was a huge bummer. Uh, you know, these guys that spray this crap, it's every fisherman's worst nightmare to see that. You know, I, I understand the purpose for it. However, it's my belief that harvesters are the, the way to go when it comes to controlling weeds and invasive plants. But it just seems like everywhere anymore, they don't, they hardly use harvesters. It's just much easier to pay these contractors to come out and spray this freaking crap all over everything. And yeah, it's, it's supposedly safe to safe for the fish and everything, but who the hell wants to eat fish after they've sprayed that crap everywhere? I sure as hell don't, and every fisherman I know doesn't. So that's a huge gripe with me. I can't stand that crap. So at any rate, as soon as I saw that, I packed it up. I said, well, I'm not fishing here for at least a month. So anyway, I'm going to wait probably a month or so for that stuff to hopefully kind of flush out. I mean, at least with the river, the water is constantly moving. It's never really sitting stagnant. So I had that. And then I actually went out yesterday morning out to Lake Henderson and the weather was gorgeous. I'll show a clip right here. That morning sun. I mean, I was out there for maybe 45 minutes to an hour. Then I got the first wind gust, which was about 15 miles an hour. And it just got worse from there. It was clouded up, started raining. Wind picked up to about 30. It was freaking miserable. So I, I packed it in and called it. So, I haven't had much luck getting back out before the holiday, but whatever, it's okay. So, that's why I figured I would make this video and kind of touch base on some other things that don't require fishing. Okay, so now on to some tackle. So, if you guys watched my vertical jigging video before, I kind of broke down the hair jigs that I use, um, which I get from Jimbo's Jigs. Um, I won't go into too much detail since that was kind of already covered, but I will show you my favorite of my hair jigs. And that would be this one here that I coined the name Goldilocks. And again, just a, a brown and orange hair with kind of a gold tassel tail here. This thing works great in the river. Also caught fish in Okeechobee with it. Just an all around good hair jig. It's got a red hook. It's not a sickle hook, um, but it hasn't kept me from catching 
a good amount of fish. So that's a 16th ounce jig right there. Now, when I'm doing any kind of casting in like deeper water um, with my Sahara 500 setup, my kind of go-to are these Roadrunner jigs. And this is just a regular hook here. This is the chartreuse head. And you can see it's got a little underspin. And this is also a 16th ounce jig head. Uh, but this thing is great with, you know, whatever color you're setting up on it. This thing, I've caught a lot of bass with this little thing too. This is a really, really nice uh, underspin to have. So if I'm not using hair jigs, I'm typically using just a plain uh, jig head. And this, these are sickle hooks. As you can see, it's a little bit different. You can tell here. It's a little bit different than a standard rounded hook. It's got kind of a little, little arch in here. Some people say these things are better for hooking up fish, but I'll be completely honest, I've caught just as many fish with this as regular hooks. So I think it's just kind of a marketing gimmick. I mean, they're sharp, but so are my regular hooks. I mean, if I'm in the store, I'm more likely to buy these just because this little arch right here, uh, straight edge arch, I guess you could call it, um, it does kind of make putting on plastics a little bit nicer. So that's why I'll tend to opt for the sickle hook. But as far as how many fish you hook, I don't, I don't believe that it will hook any more fish than a regular hook. Uh, but that's just my opinion. But yeah, it's just a plain, not painted or anything. I do have painted heads. Um, I do have like 32nd ounce painted jig heads that sometimes I'll throw on. But these things are kind of my go-to. So those are really cool. And if I do have to use a bobber, like if I'm minnow fishing, I like these. Uh, I don't know if you can pick these up at Walmart. Um, I think I got these at Fast Break, but these both have the little plastic tips that you can pull out. Usually have to do it with my teeth if they get too stuck, but it has the little slit in the middle. And this is really nice for getting on and off your line as opposed to uh, bobbers that you have to like cut off your jig head and then slide the bobber on the line. I, I can't stand those things. I like being able to quickly take it on and off. So that's why these are nice. They're low profile and they're still really easy to see. So moving on to plastics. Uh, so you guys may already know that I like my Bobby Garland electric chicken baby shads. These things are fantastic. Caught so many fish with these things. And honestly, I've been kind of poking around with these. Uh, these are by Mr. Crappy, also electric chicken. But as you can see, these have a nice fat kind of grubby pink top with a, uh, a bushy green sparkle tail. These things also very, very good in, in the, the river where I fish. If you want a little bit more action, I think those bushy tails are, are nice to have. So moving on, um, uh, one that I really like to keep in my tackle box are these power baits. Now I have different colors of these. Um, for instance, this is the black shad two inch minnow. And uh, these things work really well. Um, really good action on a on just a plain jig head. If you want to replicate a minnow, there's no better bait. Power bait, 100% best one you can get. So uh, yeah, anytime that you know you, you're we're fishing around and we see minnow fishermen like pulling in more fish than we are, I'll freaking tie on one of these things and it's the next best thing to a live minnow. So again, that's a uh, power bait, and this is black shad. They have uh, emerald shiner. Um, I think there's like a mud minnow one that has a little bit more copper look to it. I've got them all and they all work really great. But if I had to pick, emerald shiner is probably my go-to. In my Harney Pond video over in Lake Okeechobee, I was using these. These are the Crappy Max. This is actually by Bass Pro Shops. Uh, but these are the Squirm and Squirt 2 inch. And uh, these, as you can see, they're just, um, they've got kind of a grape uh, body uh, with a orange bushy tail. Um, these have really good action. And uh, that orange is really kind of fluorescent. So it really makes the jig pop when you're kind of bouncing it. So uh, yeah, these things freaking killed it in Harney Pond. So I bought a few more bags of these and I think you can only get them at Bass Pro. So these are really nice. 
And lastly, these are a tried and true staple to Okeechobee. I might get some flack for sharing this because it's a, it's a little known secret, but uh, these are the 1100 uh, bushy tail plastic. And these are by Mid-South Tackle. You can find these at uh, Fast Break, uh, maybe online. I don't know if they have a website or not. These things are what my dad smoked me on the first day on Lake Okeechobee. I was being stubborn and I refused to switch over to these. And I knew that they worked. I mean, they've been working for a long time for, for him and my uncle and his brother. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, I refused to switch over and I kept trying different colors. Not to pull in a fish every now and then, but he was just steadily catching fish on these. So these are proven when nothing else will work. These do pull in fish. So good to have these in your tackle box if you're fishing Lake Okeechobee. So here's one more piece of gear that I use. Not too often, it depends on where I'm fishing. Um, so usually in the spring months when uh, the spawn is really getting into full swing, pulling holes is a really effective method at getting at those shallow water specks. And so my dad, made this for me this is my polling tool now this is just like a a really long telescoping it's a 16 foot telescoping pole and this thing whew, it's long and it's a bit heavy uh, i used to have another iteration of this that was slightly lighter but it bent really easy so um he got this from home depot i believe the pole itself and then he just added on this little piece of aluminum I believe this is maybe steel I'm not too sure and it's got weeds all over it but this is what I use to pull open a hole in the weeds nothing to it and this is kind of just the first design I feel like we're gonna maybe try some different designs because I have a couple things in mind myself but for just kind of inch and open a hole this thing is really nice I'll just use this in one hand and I'll put the uh, the jigging rod in the other and kind of just drop that jig down as I'm pulling the weeds back or lily pads, water hyacinth, whatever it is that you're pulling. So anyway, that is another tool that I keep on the boat. And while we're on the topic of tools, um, this is the second thing I'll keep on the boat. Uh, again, usually during springtime is when I'll use these the most, but this we call Calcutta. Uh, same kind of concept with the telescoping pole, uh, but this is a, uh, a sharp, hooked uh, design, but on the inside, it's really sharp. But this tool is really useful for getting your jig unhooked from really thick cover. So whether that be a bull rush, that maiden cane, uh, just standard reeds. Yeah, you just kind of get this wrapped around whatever it is you're hung up on and just yank it out real quick and it'll cut whatever it is it's hung up on and then you can easily just pull your jig out. So this thing is really handy to have on the boat too. And so that pretty much wraps up my gear. If there's something else you guys can think of that I didn't cover, uh, just drop me a comment, let me know. But in a nutshell, that's really all I use. Uh, vertical jigging, you don't need much. Um, like I said, the reels are super basic. The rods are super basic. It's not like you're doing offshore fishing or anything in this stuff. It's about as basic as it gets. But you want to have good gear when you go out. Obviously you can do the same thing with just a basic cane pole. It just all depends on what you're comfortable with and what you want to spend the money on. So as of right now, my 10 foot mid seater, my 11 foot rear seater, and then my custom 10 foot jig pole. Those are my go-to jigging rods. And then if I need to cast something, I'll use my Sam's uh, super sensitive graphite jig pole, a six footer. And that's it. So I hope this was somewhat useful for you guys. And again, if you have any questions of something I didn't cover or anything you want to know more on, just drop a comment, let me know. Uh, but at any rate, we're going to get to cooking some more food here. It is Christmas Eve right now. So we've got some food to cook and uh, get ready for tonight and then get ready for Christmas tomorrow morning. So again, I hope you guys have a wonderful Christmas with your families. And uh, thank you so much for watching and consider subscribing if you're not already subscribed. And I will see you guys on the water.